So today I was thinking that we could finish uh, our for DS uh, book and then see if we can discuss some, you know, what would be the uh, next book that we take up. Uh, because mm -hmm. I think just that going through this book has been super helpful. Like even the smallest of things have helped me a lot. Yes. I would like to do another book club as well. So we can just brainstorm on what to do and etc. So some suggestions from the group was our for ds community was to have Mastering Shiny or uh, that to take it up as the next book because yeah. so usually people move in the same format like that. So yeah, we can discuss. You can also come up with a few things and uh, uh, let me know and then we can all ask John uh, to help us move forward. Right. Um, so yeah um, at today uh, I'll just walk through the it's a very interesting and small chapter I'll just walk through the whole uh, um, uh, both the chapters so I think last chapter what we did was actually uh, graphics for communication like how to change the theme of ggplot how to add yes. extra ggplot all these things so uh, this chapter is about how to um, uh, different markdown formats so markdown we all use for different things one is for sharing things with other people and also showing the result and like, like a report code and uh, analysis report and then otherwise you can make presentations out of it you can make dashboards yeah. you can uh, you can make shiny applications using all those things so uh, yeah you can just do that by uh, modifying the yaml header like what should be the output if you want html document you can say that or you can also use the proper coding i don't know how much of uh, how many people do this and uh, render as a word document or a html document i usually use this just need to pdf need to html etc so right. the Output options also, you have multiple uh, parameters that you could give, like you would have a TOC or table of contents, which is available. And if it has to float, like does it have to float and collapse when you're going down or however it is. And then also have two kinds of documents produced. One is HTML, one is PDF. You just need to say which one is default and which one you want to create. So there are many uh, kind of uh, uh, extension documents that can be made with uh, uh, with the markdown. One is MD document. I think all of us use for GitHub and uh, oh, sorry, GitHub document. MD is just a markdown document. Uh, I have not but used MD document is used in GitHub also for readme. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but I'm not sure how much I have never used it. I have just used GitHub document PDF. And you told me about the word document, which was very like beautifully rendered with no mistakes. So uh, ODT and rich text format is also famous. So you could just um, just uh, uh, use this of any one of it. And when generating a document to share with people like decision makers and all, you can turn off the display of the code as well by setting in the global option that uh, uh, options of the chunk set echo equals false. So only uh, you can just, uh, there will be no code displayed for each of the analysis. But when you collaborate with decision makers, uh, sorry, other data scientists, then we probably might want to share codes as well. So you can also do a code hiding. This is more useful than this, I guess, that because you know, you can just, if people want to see, they will see the code. There'll be just a button like this to code hide, code show like that, show hide. It's very more, feasible than uh, doing, just not showing any uh, code. So there is a variant of this HTML document, which is HTML notebook. So as uh, so HTML document is usually for to share with people who are decision makers, like they need not see your code or anything. They just need to see a report. But why, uh, but a notebook is uh, focused on uh, collaborating with other data scientists. Like they might want to edit this notebook. Um, and you can also just the RMD is generated as soon as you have this dot NB HTML extension. Uh, it, uh, like, um, yeah, so in our studio, you can, you can edit the dot NB dot HTML file. You can't do that with just dot HTML file. And in the future, as they say in the book, you will also be able to include supporting files like CSV files, which will which can be automatically extracted. 
So, uh, and .md file is a simple way to share analysis with your colleagues, but also uh, it's painful. Like if you both do the changes, then nobody knows where it's being tracked. So for that, Git and GitHub is a very important uh, skill to have. Um, and then, uh, yeah, you can show, you can also see your outputs in two different ways, like HTML notebook, a GitHub document, and then both of them could be uh, default, like HTML notebook gives you a local preview and you can share that via email. And GitHub document will be a minimal markdown file, which can check into your Git so that, you know, in Git, HTML notebook will not be seen very correctly. So you need to have a mark, uh, GitHub document. So coming to the next format of our markdown, it's presentation. So you can have, you can make beautiful presentations. I've seen many, many amazing presentations made in uh, our markdown, which was similar to Keynote or PowerPoint, but uh, way more, it was more funky. And there were so many options. You could add emojis and you could make things uh, uh, very cool. So um, yeah, the different format it comes in is ISO slides presentation, slidey presentation, Beamer presentation. So I think uh, Beamer presentation is uh, with PDF presentation with latex. Um, and there are also supporting other formats which are provided by different packages like um, reveal.js probably. Uh, Sorry? For presentation, there is one more package also, sharing one. X -A -R -I -N -G -A -N. Yeah, Sharingan. I think I use Sharingan only. I have not used yes. Reveal.js or anything. Sharingan is my go-to. And there is also RMD Shower, which is like a wrapper around Shower. I think Shower is a presentation uh, software, like presentation, PPT and Keynote. Yes. And yeah, you can also just beautifully add a R markdown to your Flex dashboard or Shiny applications. Each level is by header, like as we know in all RMD files. And you can have stuff like this with just one, uh, with just this. I'm sure it was, it's, uh, it'll beautifully fall into place and then it can, yeah, but you need flex dashboard for this. It's not just uh, uh, RMD you files. Install it. Yeah, we need to install it. And there are many more uh, other options. Please uh, remember to check out this link as well. So uh, there is also interactivity, like um, if you want to, you know, pan in different maps, if you see uh, uh, there, are, uh, there are multiple HTML widgets, like one of them is leaflet as shown below, you need to load leaflet and then you can just pan uh, through leaflet, like you can move around and zoom. I don't know why it's not seen in mine. And, uh, but you can't do that in a book. So uh, you need to have that, like uh, you, uh, you need to have, sorry, you need to have that interactivity in a kind of flex board or dashboard or something like that, uh, like that. Um, yeah, and also you can have different kind of uh, JavaScript or HTML uh, widgets. Uh, yeah, you need to use HTML or JavaScript to make these HTML widgets. So um, th there are many uh, packages for that. There is digraphs, there is DT for interactive tables. Like in DT, you can actually uh, filter and then you can see the maximum value, minimum value. And you can also search, like what do you want to see? What uh, inputs do you want to see? All these things. And there's also 3GS, which is very, uh, which is very popular, I think for 3D uh, plots. And there is diagram. I have not used uh, diagram diagrammer so not sure uh, yeah and there's also link of complete packages that can be uh, supported in our uh, markdown um, using this link so yeah there is also another server side thing which is i think we all know the the very interesting another part of uh, things which is like uh, shiny which has a client side and a server side so it cannot just run with the client side so um, you just can uh, use uh, in the runtime it has uh, make it in the runtime use shiny and then use the output document as an html document and you will have a page like this what is your name and you can enter so you need to have like a back end to it as well like how to do the coding, what to do with the input values, et cetera, et cetera. I'm sure it's, uh, we'll definitely talk more about it when, um, when we do the 
uh, Mastering Shiny uh, book club. So um, there are also websites like um, you can just make a, a, your own website and host it on GitHub, like put an RMD file in all uh, single directory, like, um, and then also have index.rmd, which will, which will become the main page. So, uh, and then add a YAML file called site.yaml and it will provide the navigation for the site. So if you just do this, like have uh, uh, multiple, like have multiple HTML RMD files rendered. And once you render the site, you will definitely have uh, a beautiful website. I did not try this. Rest all examples work for me. I did not try this because I thought I'll try this later. But uh, I just saw... Um, there are some packages like a block down and a distill. Yes, yes, yes. So my website is made with just block down and it's super, super easy. And uh, it doesn't need uh, a lot of um, a lot of coding as well. So I just did some, uh, I just copied the f uh, whole uh, blog and then I tried to uh, update it based on my requirements and all. So it has turned out to be pretty, very, very neat. I never thought that I could have something as beautiful as this. So uh, it's all, again, in the uh, back end, it's all markdown files. So um, yeah, you could definitely do that. And there are other uh, formats as well, like Bookdown, Pretty Doc, uh, articles, etc. So Bookdown is usually for projects, like uh, you want to have a project and then you share it. I think this whole book is made using Bookdown package. So yes, and, um, uh, there is one more purpose also for Bookdown. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you go up uh, when there is an output uh, in YAML code? Uh, output, you have written Word document or uh, HTML document. Instead of that, uh, if you write book down, uh, double colon, then word document two. Oh, so that both of possible. Because uh, uh, in normal HTML, PDF, or word document, it is not possible to cross reference. That means, for example, you have written word document, uh, you cannot cross reference from first chapter to second chapter, or vice versa. But if you are using Word uh, book down double colon uh, word document two, then you can do that also. Oh, got it, got it, got it. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember what I did for book down, but I'm sure. Yes, book uh, down uh, definitely possible to write a book uh, like this. Uh, but one more purpose is uh, as explained in uh, R Markdown cookbook. Uh, by Yuhuishi, the developer of this package. Okay, okay. So if you want to cross-reference, then uh, you will need this book down package. Okay, 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 okay. Got it, yeah. I think Yuhuishi is also the author of Sharingan? Yes, Sharingan is also same. Sharingan, yeah. Niter, uh, R Markdown, even Tiny Text, all these packages are, are written by the same developer. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Cool, cool. Pretty cool packages. Thank you, uh, Malik. Um, so yeah, other formats and there are pretty doc as well, uh, um, which is also very like, you can have very nice themes in that. So uh, I usually use pretty doc for making my, all the things look beautiful. Otherwise, uh, I, I don't know what color combinations I should use. So you use article package more uh, to submit journal articles. Yes, yes. Articles. No, yeah. I have not used it till now, but everybody tells that uh, it's super helpful for certain... Um, quite helpful. Uh, but the thing is, you will need one uh, latex compiler also because the uh, uh, default output format is PDF. And for that, right. you will need latex compiler like mixtex or at least you will need tiny text. Correct, correct, correct. Correct. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, I'll keep that in mind. Actually, I did want to do a complete course on RMR ground formats, like go through each of the links. I have not gone through it because I don't know why R markdown is very helpful. Like you can just use it in everywhere if you like coding. So it's a very strong uh, skill to uh, have there as well. Are, there are two uh, books by this same author, uh, Yuhushi, uh, Dynamic mm -hmm. Documents with R markdown. 
and then uh, there is a follow up book uh, r markdown cookbook mm -hmm. okay yeah let's see if we could do that sometime in fact i would even suggest these two books for a book club yeah sure sure we could do that yes um so yeah in learning more it's just how to make pretty presentations and then um there are few links on how to um like how to improve your public speaking skills and you know add things to your uh, cv and also there's a very important book of information dashboard design the effective visual communication of data like how to create um dashboards which are actually useful and not just pretty so um there's also a good book called the non designers design book so effect to effectively communicate your ideas um so yeah and finally the last chapter um is um earlier uh, yeah uh, r markdown workflow um yeah so when we uh, have uh, uh when we have something like r markdown um it's also very uh, holistic and it, everything is integrated uh you don't have to remember what uh, you have you know written in the past and what analysis was coming out of it and also uh, you keep uh, updating your code so that and if you have github you track changes of what is happening and then you can also see that why once you change the data there is some other result so uh you can all, and all this also helps some others to collaborate and work with you and helps them to understand your work better so having uh, the whole r markdown workflow is uh, very helpful for uh, for uh, for reproducible research in this world so uh, uh, yeah and there are something uh, some good advice for using lab notebooks or you know to share with your lab so that uh, you can do your own analysis so have a descriptive title and uh, an evocative file name and also have these paragraphs so it gives a liberty to us to write and write in that so why not write each step and explain it uh, well and you can also have the uh, date like what time did you actually start uh, uh, what did uh, what is the first time you did it so um Uh, that's also very important because i have multiple uh, dates and then i don't know oh, when did i do this analysis but this just this having this marked down it reminds me oh i started in this time so uh, sometimes you also ha don't have uh, yeah you reach on a dead end like you spend a lot of time on analysis and then there is no output so you can need not delete it you can just write why you can write a brief note inside the analysis of why it did not work and uh, uh yeah and uh, yeah generally uh, you do uh, you do the data entry outside of r but if you need to record a small snippet of data uh, you can use table triple function so uh, to uh, record uh, uh, record some data and uh, if you yeah if you discover an error in data file never modify it directly i think we all know this since we all code it's very yeah. easier code it than working with raw files you can keep the raw files as they are and uh, you can do the cleaning in the code process so your raw file is not touched because anybody asks you raw file you always have it and uh, you also make sure that you need to the notebook every day because and also clear the cache so that you know you don't have uh, then you there's no uh, backlog in the day like if you forget to knit and then it's not knitting the next day you don't want to do that and also if you want your code to be reproducible in the long run you'll have to track versions of the package that your code uses so uh packrit is something which does it i usually don't use it i use session info to remember what um, uh what are the versions of the packages that was used in my pc uh but i think a uh, packrate and checkpoint would be a very good resource because i think it stores packages in your project directory as well uh and it might be reinstalled uh if needed at some other point of time no, actually packrate uh, packrate and now there is renv r n v r e n v renv i don't know what uh, the pronunciation is on right r n v on yes no not r n it is only r e n v that's it Oh yeah, so R and huh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. 
so these two packages actually ship uh, our version of the packages also along with the document to the recipient mm -hmm. so that uh, um, the whole uh, work uh, goes on as uh, we have intended it for example in my pack uh, version there is r3.6 and therefore the packages are also uh, up to r3.6 but you have mm -hmm. the latest version r4.1.2 so mm -hmm. uh, when i use renvi or uh, packret uh, along with my rmd file you will also get those package versions which are compatible for r3.6 and therefore uh, my analysis uh, will be uh, reproduced to your computer exactly as it was on my computer oh perfect okay okay got it got it yeah i did not check this out but let me make a note of it and they are both actually package managers okay sorry yeah i got distracted <laughs> yeah so uh, also uh, have individual projects like each for each as you were mentioning right now like when i'm transferring projects to each other we can instead of having individual files you can just have a whole project and that data folder r folder script folder or however you want it to be yes so yeah um that's all from my side congratulations we finished a whole uh book in a year or so <laughs> thank you so yes. much in fact you know, i have started. written Standing and i have i have written uh, two three functions for r markdown uh, one is neat with date it actually came up uh, in the uh, uhis book uh, r markdown cookbook so uh, that function is neat with date that means uh, it will need the book uh, or rmd file along with the date uh, in the file name say for example i have oh. written r4dx so i can uh, have pull yes. request uh, no not for pull request uh, when i need it on my computer uh, the file name will be uh, for example r4dx uh, 99 uh, 2021 so i will know uh, whatever the output yeah. format will be html so i will know what happened on that particular date and i will go through it and thereafter i can change it uh, uh, accordingly correct correct so i was I... you suggested to uh, the author of the package because uh, they could add one more function right to the whole package this seems yes. like a very useful function i have multiple i have so many i have to change the date manually you know i want this function <laughs> so if you no, there are there are two ways. there are two ways actually uh, first thing is like this uh, uh, if you use this function uh, you will also have to change one more thing in yaml header uh, you will have to add one more line uh, neat then colon and then space and then you will have to refer to this function so that now the neat button will uh, change its behavior when you neat uh, the output file will have uh, file name plus date uh, in its file okay, name okay. okay 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 and second yeah. idea is uh, in the output you have written date right so in the date yeah. you can also uh, uh, you have, right now you have hard coded the date that means you have written the actual date in uh, your format but you can also uh, change it to uh, r function like r uh, i mean first backtick then r then space then format sys date uh, like that and then format percentage b percentage d percentage y oh got it got it not just the default way which it shows up no right ah. so when the yaml accepts r functions mm 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 and even uh, you can also write uh, functions for output format like uh, output uh, and suppose you have, you want to modify the date uh, depending upon the output format say for example if the output is html your date should be like this and if the format is pdf your date should be something different you can write function there also 
everything is a function actually in yaml yeah. in the r markdown everything oh okay 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 i have not actually seen the source code of r markdown like i thought it's very difficult because it deals with a uh, third party api a lot like pdf latest and all i never wanted to go into that field and probably i wouldn't understand as well but yeah i will give it a try and please try to submit the thing functions to the original package if possible no the you who is already written this function oh okay okay uh if you download or if you read the just like we have r4ds online version available the online mm. version of r markdown cookbook is also available in that book this function is already there oh okay 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 Mm-hmm. and i just modified it uh, for my purpose uh, simply because uh, i have uh, i have a definite workflow for my project for example uh, i don't keep it uh, everything in single folder i do create our uh, uh, our studio project but within this project also i create different folders like mm-hmm. output then uh, notes then code files etc and there is separate folder for figures also so whenever uh, i want to need uh, i will uh, uh, customize it so that the output is already uh, uh, stored in the output folder within the project there is output or paper folder so i have created function need to paper so automatically the needed document the html or word uh, goes into that output folder oh okay so that's just the change for me uh, anyone can do it and i think that need not go to the original package hmm hmm because it depends upon your workflow yeah so nowadays i am more active in r markdown rather than core r oh, because okay. my submission all require r markdown yeah 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 in fact yeah. i also prepared a form a template uh, for pdf uh, to submit the report in my college uh, it will have college logo and everything oh wow yes uh, you need to create a package for that actually and within that package you will have to use that use this colon colon uh, use underscore rmd underscore template that way you can create your own rmd template also yeah 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 i think i have heard that yes uh, i learned it from david keys uh, he is active on twitter r for the rest of us yes r for the rest of us yeah uh, yes uh, he had uh, suggested this idea okay 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 Okay, so that's, yes that's the end of our tip, book yeah i will take the suggestions and i'll ask in the uh, r4ds community as well and uh, let me see uh, like what there are many come. more books like mastering shiny even there is advanced r also written yes, by advanced r also yes uh, and then uh, tmwr is also there that also that already has book club yeah that is tomorrow what is tmwr tidy, tidy modeling with art tidy modeling with art uh, written by max kuhn and julia silge yes max kuhn and julia silge yeah they have written fantastic book actually uh, because wow. i don't un- still understand the tidy modeling workflow uh, mm. they are actually doing machine learning uh, that itself is new for me i am using econometrics where i don't have to do resampling and all this work oh okay 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 got it i have only just started machine learning i wasn't doing machine learning till now but uh, it is a roller coaster right but our community support and all is so much so good that i don't yes. have to worry about it i just didn't understand why do we no, need to resample uh, like bootstrap or cross validation why because uh, in econometrics we never do it we use all the data only to understand the phenomenon that's it 
but now uh, max kun and julia silvi are saying uh, the purpose is not to understand the phenomenon but to predict future values oh. only then we can be sure that we have understood the phenomenon and we are accurately understanding it and that's why we need resampling so now i am coming to terms uh, why we are doing it and i just downloaded that book uh, two three days ago okay 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 i am trying to understand this yeah if i have any uh, if i if i get any so resources i will definitely let you know sure okay yeah okay. thank you so much malik uh, if there is anything i will uh, again dm you and let you know thank you so much it has it was really helpful have a good day good day yeah bye bye